Now, let's cover an exercise for metabolic flux analysis by using the mass balance based approach to calculate the reaction rate, the fluxes. First, let's remember the steps we need to go through for what is called metabolic flux analysis. First, we construct a reaction list. This reaction list has to have a biomass reaction by linking metabolic precursors or building blocks to macromolecule synthesis. And growth associated and non-growth associated ATP requirements should be considered. The next step is to write mass balances around intracellular metabolites. And here, intracellular means that the metabolite within the system boundary. Afterwards, degrees of freedom is calculated. And if degrees of freedom is zero, or number of measured rates is equal to degrees of freedom, then we can calculate unknown rates by simple calculation, and such systems are referred as determined systems. And flux calculation for determined systems is known as, referred as metabolic flux analysis. Here is the example we will go through. Saccharomyces cerevisiae was grown in anaerobic environment and glucose consumption rate was measured as well as ethanol and glycerol production rates. This is the glucose consumption rate. This is the ethanol consumption, ethanol production rate. This is the glycerol production rate. And additionally, growth rate was also measured, which is 0 0.1. And a very simple metabolic network is given. As you see, it is very simple. The upper glycolysis, the six carbon part of glycolysis is represented as a single reaction. And the lower glycolysis, the three carbon section of glycolysis is represented as, an, as, as a single reaction. Then this is anaerobic, so no TCA cycle reaction, TCA cycle activity is ignored. Instead, pyruvate is converted to ethanol to balance NADH produced in the glycolysis. And also, there is the production of glycerol as another fermentative product. And the biomass formation reaction is very simple, as you see. Among many, about 12 precursors, only two, two are considered here, pyruvate and glyceraldehyde triphosphate. And here what you see is growth-associated ATP requirement. Remember that we add this growth-associated ATP requirement as a substrate uh, for biomass reaction. So we are asked to predict the rates of this system so by using this simple metabolic network. And it is also given that glucose is an external metabolite in this system as a substrate taken from environment, and ethanol, glycerol, carbon dioxide uh, are external metabolites. Not ATP, there's a, a typo here. And also biomass can be considered as a product for mathematical purposes. So this is the given problem. You see a sketch here. So glucose goes to 
glycerol B phosphate, which goes to pyruvate. Pyruvate goes to the product glycerol. Py sorry, pyruvate goes to the product ethanol. Glycerol three phosphate goes to product glycerol, and glycerol three phosphate and pyruvate are used as precursors for biomass reaction for macromolecule synthesis. And in this system, we have five intracellular reactions and we have five exchange reactions. So in total, we have 10 reactions and we would like to predict the rates of those reactions. So we have 10 unknowns. And what is the number of balances? Remember, we write the balances around the metabolites within our system boundary. So one, two, three, four, five, six metabolites here. But there are also other metabolites which are not depicted in that figure. So we have ATP, we have NADH, we have carbon dioxide, so six here plus these three, we have nine balances, nine equations. Which means that the grid of freedom is one. So if we specify the value of one of the unknowns, we can predict all the other rates in this system. Let's say we want to specify glucose uptake rate as measured to predict the other rates. So the first thing now to do is to write our dynamic mass balances. Glucose level is determined by the rate of glucose uptake and the rate of consumption of glucose by V1. So here is our glucose uh, dynamic balance, mass balance. For glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, it is produced by reaction V1, it is consumed by reaction V2, V4, and V5. And those coefficients are important. So the coefficient here in the production reaction is 2, and the consumption reaction here is 7. So you also put those coefficients when you write the mass balance around glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is around pyruvate. So pyruvate is produced by V2, consumed by V3, consumed by V5, and here the coefficient is 5. So this will be our mass balance for pyruvate. ATP is consumed by reaction 1 with a coefficient of 2 produced in reaction 2 with a coefficient of 2 and consumed in reaction 5 by MS formation reaction with a coefficient of minus 40. What about NADH? So NADH is produced by reaction 2 plus produced by reaction 3, reaction 4, so it consumed by reaction 3 and reaction 4, and also consumed by, sorry, produced by reaction 5. So we will have plus 4 here. Carbon dioxide balance. So I see carbon dioxide here. Here, so, and also there will be a carbon dioxide secretion reaction, exchange reaction. And this leads to the balance around carbon dioxide. For ethanol, it is V3 minus the secretion rate. For glycerol, it is V4 minus the secretion rate. 
And similarly, you can write biomass uh, balance as V5 minus V biome. So we have nine balances. We do the steady state assumption. So all the uh, left hand side is zero, which means that those metabolized within the system boundary, they do not accumulate over time. And then the next step is to solve this set of equations. Given that we have measured value of V glucose. So, from this equation, we can write V4 as in terms of the other reactions, right? From here, we can write V3 as V2 minus V5. Here we have written V1 is equal to V glucose. And here, now, since we have a V3 value here, and V4 value from this equation, we can put them into the NADH balance equation. So V2 minus V3 minus V4 from here plus 4, 4 V5. And here V2s will cancel. Let's do it with a different color. V2s will cancel. And we will have minus 2 V glucose. We will have another V2 here. And sum of V5 terms. So we will have this equation at the end. So we have this equation called equation A, and we have an equation around ATP. So we already know V equal glucose value. So the two unknowns in this equation is V5 and V2. And when we come here, V1 is equal to V glucose, right, from here. So again, then the only two unknowns in this equation is V2 and V5. So if we take these two equations, they have actually so I have actually two equations and two unknowns, which means that I can solve this equation, this set of equations, to get the values of V2 and V5. Simply, if you do simple calculation, you will get that V5 is equal to V glucose divided by 36. So the value of V5, which is also equal to V biomass, the biomass formation rate, in other words, the growth rate, is equal to 5.29, the glucose consumption rate, divided by 36 which will give you a value of around 0 0.14. So the measured growth rate was 0 0.10, given in the problem formulation. By using a very simple metabolic network and a very simple biomass formation reaction, we were able to predict the growth rate within a reasonable error. If we calculate the rate of ethanol formation and glycerol formation and compare those rates with the measured ones, we will see that they, they, the prediction is even better for these formation rates. So as you see, by using mass balancing 
approach by using a biomass equation and by only using the measured rate of glucose consumption, you can predict growth rate, ethanol, ethanol production rate, glycerol production rate, and the rates of all other intracellular reactions in this system. So this is the power of metabolic flux analysis approach or flux-based steady state mass balancing approach. One point before ending this session. We write the balances within the system boundary. And for this system, we have four metabolites within the system boundary. So we will write four balances. And the number of unknowns is six. So I have a degrees of freedom of two in this system. But for linear equation, linear reactions, with linear reaction, what I mean is here metabolite A, it doesn't take place any other in any other reaction. It is produced by one reaction and is consumed by another reaction. So for such systems, I can lump those linear equations because, you know, always V3 will be equal to Y, V5, and V4 will be equal to V6, and V1 will be equal to V2, always. So I can rewrite, I can redefine system boundary in a more simplistic way. And here, I don't consider A, B, C within my system boundary. Here too, I have a degrees of freedom of two. But this is much more simple because I should only write one mass balance rather than four. Of course, we will not solve those problems by hand. We will use computer algorithms. So it doesn't matter if you have a bigger system or a smaller system. But I have talked about the lumping approach in 90s. So uh, this lumping, uh, so there's, there's also kind of lumping here. This lumping approach can be applied here to get uh, systems that can be more easily solved by hand. So both systems, they are mathematically the same. But if a metabolite produced or consumed is involved in a single reaction, this was lumped to get a simpler metabolic network. <laughs> 